Hello and welcome disc golf fans to the front nine holes of the final round of the 2021 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge presented by Innova Champion Discs. I'm Brian Earhart joined here by Nathan Queen one more time. Nathan, we have the chase card covered here. Connor O'Reilly on the lead card is quite a few strokes ahead. But again, we've said this time and time, time and time again, Iron Hill can give and Iron Hill can take away. Yeah, we watched Connor get to that spot from the chase card. So now we've got Calvin Heimberg, Corey Ellis, Joel Freeman, and Paul Ulibarri looking to do the same thing that Connor O'Reilly did yesterday. Yeah, you see Connor eight strokes ahead of this chase card. But double digits can shoot you way up the leaderboard no matter where you're at. And let's jump right into it. We have the Flight Factory drone flyover moving into hole one. I think the, the OB that has been placed on this hole deep on the left side, it forces the player to really want to get aggressive off this tee shot. Whereas before it was a little easier to not bend the corner as far. Tampa Bay, Florida, please welcome Calvin Heimberg. So Calvin, after starting off the first round with a, with a pretty hot front nine and then flattening out and kind of dropping back to an even, shoots a 10 down the second round to jump way back up to chase card. He gets the tee off first. And it looks pretty good, and he has roll bounced right to a perfect spot in the fairway. Barbersville, West Virginia, Court Ellis. Let's go, Court. And Corey Ellis been making a pretty big splash this year, especially at D Glow. He came out just throwing super far, clean lines, and, and able to take a top five finish there. The thing about Corey at this course that I think is really solid is the fact that he's one of the best standstill throwers on tour right now in regards to power. <clears throat> oh, and Heiser flipped to turn. Look at this shot. Beautiful shot. Never off of the line that he wanted it to be on. And he'll have a pretty similar shot or a shorter sidearm into the green from there. And Joel also having a nice little comeback this season. After taking a little bit of a hiatus in previous years, he has a fantastic sidearm that he'll be able to carve through these woods. From Sholo, Arizona, Paul Ulaberry. And Paul loves Iron Hill, and Paul attacks Iron Hill uh, in every sense of the word attack. He is aggressive when it comes to gap hitting. A very flippy, uh, seemed like fairway driver there yeah. from Yuli. Incredible touch shot. He's got so much late snap to not overturn a flippy disc like that is very impressive. All right, Joel pitching out with a little spike flick. Calvin going turnover through this gap. Again, we've, we've said it. If you hit any tree with that clockwise spin, you might be kicking on the bounce quickly. This doesn't seem to be hitting any trees, though, besides the logs that are cut around this basket here. Beautiful shot from Calvin. He'll have a fairly easy birdie putt. Ooh, sawing that off a little bit. And Paul has gone out of bounds. He's turned that over. He's going to go to a drop zone. Cool. 
Corey going to that standstill pretty quickly. Uh, pretty much misses that shot, but he's missed it enough to get down the fairway on the right side of the gap. He'll have a circle two look. And Joel with a forehand right up to that green, he'll be able to save his par from there. And a scary putt to run, but like you said, Yuli is in attack mode at this course, tries to knock it down. And Yuli's been having a great year in the putting green. He's actually one of the top circle one putters on tour right now. Circle two, he's not as high of a percentage, but again, the stroke is, is looking really solid from him this year. Oh, and Corey with the missed putt again. Putting for a bogey. Paul able to connect on his bogey putt, which is a, pretty much the best you can do once you go OB on that second shot. You could make that drop zone putt, but you really can't expect to. Corey with a bit of a shaky putting start there. He missed a circle two and missed the comebacker. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll see him settle in though. He's got a solid putt. And after the chaos, single birdie for Calvin as Joel is going to be tapping in his four, moving into hole number two. Yeah, great conservative play from Joel there once he was in the woods. He knew there wasn't a way to get a birdie, just pitched out to a good spot so he could get his par. That moves us into hole two, 380 feet, where the drone is flying right now is the ideal line with a... Mid-range, if you can reach it, uh, righty, backhand, hyzer, stand up. Fairway driver as well, you've just got to push it a little faster and have slightly quicker stand up on it. Kind of like this. It's a little less inside than uh, Calvin's shot in round one. That's a great result. Okay. Joel trying to hit that same line. Just, there's a, there's a tree or two that you have to just barely miss the inside of that are over on the right side of this fairway. He just barely catches one. Drops down for an easy pitch up or a long look for a birdie. So Corey going Undertaker here. This is a good stability for how hard he throws. Great shot. That was looking so good, six inches, and he would have had a perfect line. And now he's scrambling from all these skinny trees. Are you kidding me, dude? Yeah, that looked like it was gonna get all the way through and it catches a late leaf, knocks it into the tree that's right in front of the basket. I think he's in the circle for a birdie look low. And Joel, or excuse me, for a par. And Joel does, Give that a bid from where he kicked down to just a bit low, but a good look from 70 feet. Calvin again. Two for two. And I think the win is very much in uh, the grasp of any of these players. Calvin right now, 
you know, this is a course that one of the best players in the world, actually a couple of them shot even on in round one. James Conrad shot even, Calvin shot even. And if, you know, Connor has one of those rounds and Calvin shoots another 10 down, it, the, the swing could easily happen. Paul cashing on the weak side for par. And a good bounce back from Corey there, able to get back to even real quick after an early bogey. Hole number three, 760. Get your shot over the brim of this hill. It's not, not seeing as many rollers as I would like to see. We saw Ricky throw one. I feel like that shapes up so nicely for this hole. I'm wondering if anybody on this card lays it down. Kind of a tougher green to access with the basket perched back here on this hill. I know Calvin isn't much for rollers. He's going to go straight at it. He got that turned a bit too far right. He may have stayed on the edge of the wood line there, though. Uh, the gap's a little harder to hit from that area, but he's still got to look to get down there as long as he did stay out of those woods. Oh, he was trying to throw that forward hyzer flip. Yeah, this is trouble. Unless it gets far enough in, like we saw yesterday, where there is a line down there. Yeah, Colton got all the way down there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and this is carrying far enough to get past these trees. He's got a big skip over to the right side. And he gets a roll all the way down to the flat. Perfect. Yeah, that's a great drive. Can't do much more than that. There was that roller you wanted. I wish. Paul going with a Z nuke this time. And he might be able to bend one down there. I'm not sure how far left he is. Yeah, that looked, that looked pretty far left. It'll be a difficult angle. It'll have to get something to flatten out and glide. Probably with a forehand. And he was just a bit too far to have the line that Colton had. Easy up and down for a four, though. And here's Calvin. And not much run in the basket from over there. There's usually not many clean lines, and it's scary behind it. He'll be pitching up for par most likely as well. Oh, no. And that's what makes this shot so difficult over there. It looks like you have room to throw your flex shot, but the ceiling is so low, it makes you put a, more of a severe angle on that turnover, and it's just not enough height. You can't get enough height where it'll come back, so you push that ceiling. Little zone chipper, 15 feet from the basket, and Paul going zone as well. Oh no, he's gonna roll down. This does look like a run in it face. A 
not OB down here. It just does add an extra level of difficulty for this putt. No problem for Calvin getting a par. For being one of the more open holes on the course to start, this whole play is pretty tough. Yeah. Most definitely. It's just those funneling fairways. You know, you, you have so much space to land outside of it, and anywhere you land gives you a completely different shot. And Paul, that's another bogey to start. Bogey, par, bogey. And on this course, it really doesn't feel good to start like that at all. Every birdie out here has to be earned. Yeah, these first four holes, ideally, you'd like to be three down through these first four to feel like you've had a good start. One and four being very gettable par fours. This one you want to get a little tougher, but... Plenty of golf left. Here we go. Number four. This is a, I would say, a stock turnover for the righties. You throw medium to under stability, land right about here or a little bit farther, and you have a pretty straight shot with a tight gap to the basket. The distance turnover helps you be able to come into the screen with more of your bread and butter shot. The closer you can get to the second gap, the better off you yeah. are. It is a pretty tight gap. They've added some OB on this hole down on the right, which kind of takes away the roller play. So Joe will be able to run the basket, but he's going to have a 10, 15 foot gap from about 150, 200 feet away. Yeah, he got some good ground play to not cut roll off to the left there, which would have taken him in a much more difficult angle. Calvin looks like he's going with a destroyer here. Oh my. Kind of a rough kick left, but he'll have, oh, oh no. He's pinched off a bit. He's gonna have a long stretch out sidearm, I believe. And this one is not turned over enough. He'll be short. He does, looks like he gets a kick to keep him from going too deep into the woods where he'll, he'll have some type of way to get towards the gap. Could be a forehand roller, could be a backhand with a very steep angle. Is Paul going with a roller here? No, he's just going steep Anheuser. Hit something. It has no hit the way. wrong thing, hits the ground, gets a bounce in the same direction it was going. He's gone OB, and we'll go to the drop zone you see right here in front of Joel. Oh, not that much. He's straightened that shot out just a bit too much. The problem with being that far away. Oh, wow. oh and he gets the skip. Corey is parked for birdie. Beautiful standstill. And this is drop zone shot for Paul. He's just been a tiny bit off and it's been punishing him. And the ringer just goes right next to the basket, so he's gonna save a par from there. And yeah, Calvin's gonna have to throw some sort of steep flex sidearm. Yeah, going back to that eagle he likes to throw. Yeah, from where he's at, he's got a pretty good birdie look from about 43 feet. And this is one of the more precarious baskets here as you see cars coming in and out. This is right on the entryway. Uh, one of the harder holes to focus on if you're not good at blocking out movement.
par for Joel. And Calvin coming just inches away from dropping another birdie, but he will also settle for par alongside Paul. And Corey sneaking through the right side with that standstill skip. He's going to take another birdie, so he's one under par. When the PDGA National Tour rolls into town, the action is intense and the competition, fire. But every inferno, no matter the size, must begin as a spark. With PDGA sanctioned leagues and tournaments, anyone can get in the game. Fuel your fire. Find an event near you at pdga.com. Hole five, 780 foot par five. Um, pretty straight shot off of the tee. You want to get at least 280 feet of distance. It doesn't sound that far for a par five, but being in the fairway is, you, you have to be in the fairway on this hole to be able to get up a good second shot and try to attack this green. Corey just smashing a three-step. Perfect shot. Let's jump back to Corey's form. We've, we've dissected this in the past. I love that Corey, even on this three-step, I love how he's leading with the elbow as he's rotating into the shot. He's not even starting all the way back on the tee pad. He's starting this three-step uh, a third up the tee pad. <laughs> Insanely impressive explosiveness off that... Uh, shortened approach. And you really, in that form check, you don't see much unneeded movement whatsoever. None. Just so smooth, straight into 330 feet of power. Calvin's flipped it, kicked off to the left, and he actually might have a decent look. That was a good kick for him, I believe. So Paul, even though it was a par, saving it from the drop zone on the last hole, could get his momentum going the right way. And as long as the ground doesn't do anything too crazy, yeah, this is a great shot. He's right in the middle, and he's going to be able to throw a full power shot to try to advance up the fairway from there. And this is... I believe a chariot that Joel has had in the bag for quite a while. Infinite disc mold. That was a nice little line, little steep hyzer push. Got yeah. it to get up to flat. Able to stand it up enough to not flare back into the woods on the left. And Paul going aggressive here. And it works out for him. Oh, wow. That was very close to getting up there and giving him an eagle look. It's a little far, but... just kind of blows my mind anybody would try a roller on this ground out here. But clearly it worked out for her. What? Corey has thrown another big shot, but gets caught up in that right side. That's only about 200 feet from the basket. Cole, or, uh, Joel is such a perfectionist when it comes to his shots. He'll throw something that looks totally fine and be very frustrated that it wasn't exactly what he wanted. Long eagle look here. He's just going to settle for a birdie from short. Cool. 
Corey with the eagle look as well. Come on. Oh, he liked it out of the hand just a little bit high. Nice birdie from Calvin there. Not quite in position off of the tee shot, but a great recovery shot and third shot to get up there for a putt. Yeah, he's three under through five. He's on a good pace. Par for Joel. Really wanted to see where Yuli's roller ended up. Got caught up on the right side, but I'm sure he's totally fine with tapping birdie on this one, as is Corey. Hole number six, it tricks you into throwing a pure hyzer around the corner. With time spent on this hole, just pushing straight with a tiny bit of fade and challenging the tree line on the far side is exactly what you want. It is a depth perception type hole. Oh yeah, that's exactly what you want. A late stand up, just missing that tree in the middle of the fairway to the right. And no fade whatsoever, just slides on up. He'll have a good forehand, ideally a forehand into the green from there. It's a good looking shot as well. Oh, and he clips one of the trees. As long as he's straight in the middle of the fairway, he should have a look. And I believe he is. And this is going to flare off to that left side. He's gotten far enough around that wood line on the left. There's a line over top of that rock that they're showing right now that he may be able to hit pretty well from where he's at. I'm wondering if that's exactly what he's looking to do is just throw as hard as he can on that hyzer and be close enough to those two, three foot gaps to where it's not so bad. Joel has thrown it far, but we'll see where he is positioned in regards to the gap. Yeah, it looks like he's pushed into that wood line on the right side. Calvin trying to throw the hero forehand flex shot from way back. That was probably 390, 400 feet still through a small gap up to the green. This is looking pretty ideal. Got to skip behind that tree. We'll see how much that comes into play on his putt. Yeah, that was exactly Paul's play. Because if you are, you know, 50 to 100 feet away from those gaps on the left side, it's um, you just don't want to go for it. But he threw it hard enough to where he was able to easily hit it. And Joel able to get a full flight from the woods on the right and gets, a, and gets a little too far. He'll have a difficult circle two look with some stuff in the way. Oh, do it. Do it. Oh, Calvin giving it a good forehand touch run. What a birdie. 
Off the fairway, off the fairway. All right. Three. Great circle two look for Joel. Yeah, that's an uphill putt. Had to go through some trees, around some trees. It's a great birdie. Corey having a straddle out. And able to convert for the turkey, putting him three under par for the round. Paul fighting back now. That's two in a row to get him back to even for the round. because of its consistency and the ability to easily float into a putting green softly. It progressively became a disc I grabbed more often and I realized that it was everything I was looking for in a primary approach disc. When I need an approach to land close to the basket, I trust the Rhino to do the job. Hole number seven. 370, downhill, tight gaps initially, and then there's the secondary gaps, there's the other secondary gaps. There's a middle section that you don't want to fade too far into. Very specific line that you can pure, but it's very hard to park the basket with the pure line. Flippy putter from Corey, and that gets caught up in, the, in that uh, middle section. You see how tight the lane is coming to the basket. I like that flippy putter play. Uh, you just got to get it to, to Heiser stand up and not really drift right at all, and it'll just go straight down. Uh, I was saying yesterday that, I was, that the play was to just throw a straight shot. After looking at it a little bit more, there's a tree in the middle where I think if you could get the forehand play to flex off to the left and then gently fade at the end would be the most ideal line to get down there. And Joel is flicking a mid-range, it looks like. This is one of his gator threes. And yeah, this is that line that I was talking about. He's pushed it a little bit wow. too far left and long. Yeah, that's a great shot. He's got a look from circle two. Just smashing on that gator. Okay, a little early but it gets a solid skip down the hill and he's gonna be pin high. Yeah, he hit that straight line with a fairway driver. I believe that's his eagle again. Uh, just pushed it fast enough where he made that final corner and got a good skip down there. Corey's been burying some huge putts this season on camera. You can tell he's comfortable. Oh yeah.
it's always tough to get the height and the, the line right on those hyzer putts. They tend to drop a lot faster, so you have to put it higher. And when you putt like Calvin, it's just get the height dialed in, and it's dropping right in the basket. Yeah, four down through seven now to start his round. Trying to make a good run. About what you expect on this hole. Few pars, somebody might get a birdie. No harm done though. And as Joel taps out his par, we're gonna move into the easiest hole on the course, surprisingly. Hole number eight, 780. Very rocky uphill initial tee shot to a very, very specific landing zone. There's space off to the left side of this next plateau here. You don't wanna be there. You wanna be flying through this lane that the drone is flying through. And even if you lay up to where she's throwing from right here, you have an up and down for a birdie. So the goal is to just get to that corner at the minimum. Yeah, if you throw a good tee shot here, then your second shot really isn't going to go that far. Uh, just the tee shot is what you need to be able to get that easy birdie. If you miss the tee shot, it turns into a hard par. Oh, that is definitely early. <laughs> Got a lot of distance, though. So with that distance, even if he just has to pitch out, he may still be able to pitch out to a birdie look. Corey has smoked this forehand. No go left, way. Go left. Ah. And he, that will net a fairly easy birdie, I believe. He should be able to get up and around that corner from there. But if he would have gone left, we may have seen an eagle play. And Paul loving these aggressive shots uphill. And he's gotten to a similar spot to Corey, a little bit farther back. He'll have to step out and throw some sort of backhand to the corner. And this sets up great for the forehands that Joel likes to throw, but that needs to get off that tree. Yeah, that looked like a great line. He's going to be a little far back. Wow. Gets through the gap in the woods, and he'll... He'll have that straight look into the green just further back than you'd ideally like to be. Ooh, Paul flicking a heat on this one. And that's still okay. That's a fine spot to be. And it, that may or may not have a look. That's that left side you were talking about you don't want to be on. Sometimes you can have a straight lane through there. And Corey almost has a putt. He got up there really far. Oh, yeah. Paul was playing a little cut roller. He is playing aggressive out here, man. Throwing all sorts of rollers. And you see, he did have a small line, got aggressive trying to hit it, and um, not going to pay off for him this time. What a touch forehand shot oh. from Joel Freeman. Had a tree close to his swing in his forehand swing. There was a tree that he had to keep his arm closer to his body than normal. And he's still able to hit that line exactly how he wanted to. And I'm sure the eagle was somewhat in his thoughts, but tap in birdie sounds great for Corey at this point.
do it. Oh, goodness. That would have been 90 feet for par on an elevated basket, something that most people wouldn't even run. Calvin misses it an inch low. So as you were saying, this is the easiest hole on the course. You know those pars don't feel real great. It's one of the ones you know you can attack and get the birdie on. Joel and Corey, though, going to take their birdies and move on to hole nine. 555 foot par four. Straight gap off of the tee. All you really need to do is throw a putter to this landing zone right here where you have another putter down to the green. There is an aggressive driver play for the righty backhand. Uh, throw a hyzer stand up turnover that drifts down the fairway. I think we're gonna see we're gonna see some aggressive play on this one. Oh my. Oh. And just a bit inside. Gets a pretty brutal kick off to the left side. We'll see what he has from over there. Short hole, so still manageable. Joel going with just a clean forehand. That is smoked down the fairway. What a line. Yeah, he hyzers just in front of that tree. This is what I want to see. Paul's got the nuke. He loves just beating these fast discs down tight tunnels. Oh, yeah. Come on. Same tree as Corey. He catches oh, that same tree. Killer. Kicks over to a similar spot a little further forward. It's heartbreaking. You just want to see those shots finish out, especially since he hit that break point so perfectly. Shot it to where he needed it to move, and it started moving right away. Is Calvin going for the same? It looked like he had driver in his hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and he has hit the gap, <clears throat> turned it over, and flexed it down this 555 foot fair. Let's see Calvin at kind of a higher speed. Definitely flattening that out a little bit. Great extension, though, in exactly. that follow through. Yeah, so solid. And that's the thing. That's how, if you are taller, like, you know, Corey or Calvin following through the way that they do is how you utilize those levers. That was, that was huge. Come on, look. Come on, look. Why? Every time. Every branch. Kidding me. Yuli forgetting there's lots of branches out here for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I mean, he's so used to woods golf. He lives in Charlotte now. He plays Angry Beaver all the time. It and just never stops being frustrating on some of those days where you're so close and yet so far. Seeing all these aggressive plays, we can't forget Joel forehand, forehand, making it look easy for the birdie. But let's see if we can get an eagle here. Oh, just right behind the basket. I think if he had that drive uh, three feet higher, it would have flattened out and given him a lot more push down that fairway.
And that putter's going to be a little hurt now. That rock didn't do it well. Paul saving par. Mm-hmm. Not quite able to bounce back with the eagle, but a birdie plays just as, not just as well, but for the feelings, just as well. And four down through the front, not terrible, but if he wants to make a run for the top, he's going to have to really turn on the jets on the back nine, which I think is tougher to score on than the front. So, uh, yeah, we've got three players at four down on the front here. So let's see here. Like you said, anybody's game moving into the back. Someone needs to catch fire. Yuli kind of shooting himself out of it. And Joel keeping it clean. Not quite getting the same amount of birdies, but no bogeys always feels better. Connor yeah. holding his lead. Four-stroke lead over Ricky Wysocki. Thank you again for tuning in. We have nine more holes for you on this chase card. Make sure to subscribe to Gatekeeper Media on YouTube. Again, I'm Brian Earhart, he is Nathan Queen, and we will see you next time. We'll see you guys out there.